Hi, Steve. Thank you so much for joining us and for answering a few questions about your life as an activist. The first one I have for you is what events or beliefs in your youth um, led you to become an activist? Well, realize this. I grew up perhaps second to right now, the immediate future that we're in now, probably the most turbulent times one can imagine. I grew up in the 60s. Um, you know, I am the son of immigrants. I am family of Holocaust survivors. I grew up in the age of Martin Luther King and, and Muhammad Ali and the Vietnam War and, and redlining, you know, where neighborhoods were torn up with the promise uh, of a better, brighter America, but only for certain people. I grew up in the age of Ralph Nader, the aftermath of Rachel Carson. But literally, and you know, sadly, the Vietnam War where literally overnight we saw neighborhoods of young men and my peers' brothers disappear, never to return again. I grew up you know, in the wave of, uh, of the heroin you know, overdoses in the cocaine 70s and 80s, fueled by the crack of cocaine nonsense of the 90s. So for me, life has led me to become an activist. Growing up in a home where my greatest heroes, of course, beyond my parents and grandparents, were Muhammad Ali and Martin Luther King, a fighter and yet another fighter, you know, a, a lover and a fighter. But what most people don't know about Martin Luther King is what a great athlete and ferocious competitor he was. Um, really was a tell, you know, one guy could knock you out literally with words, the other one with a left or a right hand instantaneously. So I grew up in an age where truth was critical um, and remains critical to this day. Um, I grew up in a world that was turbulent. Um, you know, I grew up perhaps in one of the most integrated neighborhoods in New York City to only see it decimated by drugs, dishonesty, greed, um, and, and, and mistruths. So for me, I'm forced to tell the truth. You know, I mean what I say and I say what I mean. And of course, connecting with Robert's work and Americans who tell the truth, this has become my Bible. Um, I think this is, you know, the book. I think people are, everyone is a person of some book, but this book is a book of universal truths. And so that's literally how I became an activist. You know, I'm not willing to accept the things I can't change. I am determined to change what I can't accept. And it starts with one simple thing, truth. Beyond being a husband, father, son, brother, and teacher, the greatest accolade in my entire career, and there have been quite a few, has really been to have my portrait painted by my dear friend and my mentor, my, my inspiration, Robert himself. So it's an honor, I am humbled. And you know, remarkably when I look, you know, I've met so many of the portraits, um, the, the, so many of the people portrayed in his book have gone on to inspire me. You know, I've met Granny D who told me to lose weight. Um, you know, uh, my work has been informed by Rachel Carson. You know, every child grew up reading about Helen Keller. So to see some Cesar Chavez, here I am, you know, with the Si Se Puede Cheer, um, which is inspired by him, Jonathan Kozel. I could go on and on and on um, speaking about, you know, Ralph Nader even and the whole notion of consumer activism. But perhaps, you know, the greatest quote for me is Utah Phillips. The degree to which you resist injustice is the degree to which you are free and our truths will set us free. Very powerful quote, you're right. So what continues to motivate you to be an activist? I mean, you've given us a lot of history. What guides you? What gives you courage? Well, again, I'll go, the opposite of courage is not cowardice. The opposite of courage is conformity, because even a dead fish can go with the flow. And I can assure you this, I am no dead fish. I've got plenty of fight and plenty of spring. Um, and what motivates me to be an activist? My children the hope of my children's children, the people I see around me, the inequities I see in the world, um, but also the possibilities. Because some people go to sleep at night and I stay up and dream. I dream of a world that's inclusive, that's fair, that has integrity and, and is not equal, but is equitable. Um, to me, that's the greatest thing. So don't talk to me about education if you don't talk to me about opportunity, but opportunity is rooted in the truth, truth for all. So there's lots of work to do. I still remain the CEO, Chief Eternal Optimist of Bronx County, but I'm determined to leave my mark and to grow something greater and to sprout another 10,000 or 100,000 Steve Ritzes along the way. 
because I'm no hero. I'm just one guy determined to make a difference. But it starts every day with telling the truth. Yes, it does. And um, I've known you for a long time. And so as you've evolved, what advice do you have now for youth activists? Oh, my advice is a simple one. Tell the truth. Stick to your values. If your values are only part-time, they're a hobby. Um, so, you know, mean what you say and say what you mean and don't be afraid to fail. Um, you know, I, I was writing to some youth the other day. I got my pad here in front of me. And, you know, what my big thing to them is that the problems that we're facing today are not your fault. So I tell this to children every day. They are not your fault, but they are your reality. And we need you to make them better. Um, you know, in this age of COVID and for generations before me, I am inspired by the heroism and bravery I see, oftentimes in the most unlikely of places. Um, you know, in Robert's book, Americans Who Tell the Truth celebrates them, and each and every portrait he's painted celebrates someone who you can emulate, who can give you an actionable bit of advice that can steer you in the right direction. Because no one has all the answers, but together we can get to a place that we all can live better. And that, to me, is what this is all about. Thank you so much. That is incredibly wonderful advice. Thanks very Thank much, you. Keith. I appreciate Learn it. Learn the Bible. This is the Bible for an activist. So, you know, I can't wait for the new version to come out. It's on my give list for children, adults, mentors, and teachers for everyone. Um, Robert, I am forever grateful to you, my brother, for telling the truth. Um, and I jokingly say my life won't be complete until Robert and I get arrested together. Um, <laughs> and that's what I'm determined to do, to find that right opportunity and make it happen. So God bless you. Thank you. Keep telling the truth. Be a seed spreader and a truth teller. We all have that sacred power within us. Thank you.